All right, pressure washing reel talk here today. Uh, we have the, this is the latest iteration of the active, uh, is it model V52? VE52, they make two models. This is the one that I think that matters. I've tested them both. Uh, there's a couple of little modifications to this newest version, which we'll talk about here in this video. Uh, but if you're not familiar, if you haven't seen the massive pressure washing series we did about a year and a half ago, um, it doing that test of testing you know, roughly 80 pressure washers and it changed my whole thought process on what we could offer at Obsessed Garage. Uh, and I originally thought I would only offer exactly what I had in my garage, uh, but I've realized uh, through lots of uh, people kicking and screaming comments, uh, the people that uh, are behind the cameras and in the offices that you know, there's a progression to life. And I've talked about progression a lot, progression in cars, progression in jobs, progression in education. Well, there's also a progression in cool stuff. And not everybody can swing, you know, two or three thousand dollars. In fact, very few people can justify that even if you could swing it uh, to wash your car. And so there are progressive steps to this. Uh, and so going through that test, I found by the end of it, that the uh, Karcher K1700 was, actually wasn't that bad. Out of all the Sun Joes, the Greenworks, the random, the, like the Briggs and Strattons that I tried, the you know all the major brands, Ryobi's, um, the Karcher K1700, which was actually their lowest end version of their pressure washing line, actually did okay. It did 1.4 gallons per minute, and did um, at about a thousand psi, which is what we're targeting, uh, and so. Recently here, uh, Mike from our uh, design team, from our media team, um, does what all these guys seem to do to me nowadays is they get me a bunch of junk that I don't want. And I say, get that out of here. And then eventually I get curious. And so I got curious when I was testing the a couple of AR professionals and I went and grabbed the actives off of the shelf over there. And sure enough, the darn things actually put out quite a bit of, uh, of, uh, of, of flow. So we're going to show you that test here today. I did a really quick test. I didn't do it on camera. Uh, so we're going to do the test here today, confirm the output of this. We're going to talk about how this works. We're going to talk about all these different fittings and accessories. Uh, and if you're, if you're interested in a lot of this data, go to obsessedgarage.com, hover over the pressure washing um, um, tab. And on the right-hand side, there's the pressure washing spreadsheet. Uh, which we have hosted on obsessedgarage.com that has um, has all of these you know these pressure washers with all the tests. I do intend at some point here uh, to go on another sort of buying spree because there's been a lot of new you know cheap pressure washers that have come out and uh, continue to compile that data and provide it provide it to uh, to the to the people that that care about it. So let's first talk about how you put this thing together. I'm gonna to assemble this here for you. So we'll talk about some of the solutions that we have, uh, and then we're gonna get into testing uh, how much, you know, how loud it is, how much flow it has, how much pressure it has, and all that stuff. So when you're dealing with most of these, almost all of these, I guess all of them in, in general, they have to come with, uh, which I just learned about, they have to come with a gun. It has to be a long gun. So there are uh, something about, um, I don't know if it's import rules, something about safety, I don't know if it's Federal Trade Commission or what that, whatever it is, but the any, any inexpensive consumer-based pressure washer has to come with what we would, I guess, call a long gun versus a short gun. So it comes with this and you're gonna throw that in the trash immediately. Uh, and then it comes with a hose, which, you could use, the hose on the active isn't horrible, but I think it's, it's only 25 feet. So you're not gonna use that. You're not gonna use the wand, at least it comes with a metal wand, but you're not gonna use that either. Um, it comes with some tips. You're not gonna use any of these. Uh, certainly you're never gonna use this foam cannon, so you don't want that. So this is what you're gonna set the machine up and you're probably gonna take this part off depending on how mobile you are. Uh, it is nice because they just, they, I think they just added this where you can wrap up the power cord. So there's a lot of fluff on this machine. Um, but in general, um, you could, you could buy the machine. It's 210 bucks. You can use all that crap I just threw in the corner and you could have an operational pressure washer. The foam cannon doesn't really work very well, but 
they're going to get some output. You're going to get a ton of pressure uh, and not as much flow as you might like because that's the way the nozzles are tuned. So what I'm going to do in any pressure washer that I buy is I'm going to start to modify. Uh, and so you start with inlet. And uh, if you're... I, I, I've made long videos from the beginning uh, because I'd assume that everyone watching this is not an idiot. But I'm going to help you out here. When you buy these, we send them like this so they don't get lost. And so we get 37 emails a week. It's in the description. It comes apart. Let me, let me do that again. Can we do that in slow motion? 240 frames per second. Watch this. You pull this in. Instead of, Jeff, Tommy, uh, you guys forgot to send us the fittings. Don't be stupid. I'm assuming you're smart. I'm not calling you stupid. I'm assuming you're smart. So these come in little pouches, nice little, beautiful little package. My mom puts them in, the, she, she folds it over, and they come together. Same thing with the brass. They come like this. And you just, there's a little spring. And it look, see how smooth that operation was? It just goes like that. So, on the inlet of the machine, um, and we have various packages. Uh, I'm not going to get into the detail of the pack. The packages are very clearly spelled out. We have basic, advanced, and ultimate. Ultimate. Uh, basic, advanced, and ultimate, depending on um, you know, how much money you want to spend. Obviously, you should always buy the ultimate because you know, it's always going to be the best, best version. It'll give you the best, best version of the gun. Uh, but and I understand the point of buying an entry-level pressure washer is to keep the cost down. But I'm telling you, if you do some of these accessories and you do this right, your user experience is going to be much, much better. So on the inlet, uh, and forgive me, this is the season. It's April. And, I mean, you're just going to have to bear with. Supply is a massive issue. Uh, you know, the, 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 the stuff that Continental uses to, uh, these are made in the USA, uh, to make these hoses was sitting in the Suez Canal, and it's just become a problem everywhere. Um, but when you, when you connect a pressure washer, you have to start with an inlet. So I have a 50-foot hose or something, but we sell these in 6 and a half, 12 feet, 20 feet, 35 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, you know, whatever you need. We sell, and one of our goals is eventually to be able to make hoses here on site. So if you needed a, you know, a 17-foot, 2-inch hose link, we can make it for you. But all of our garden hose setups, or inlet hoses, have an O-ring. Uh, and so you can, if you find that you're, you're ending up with some leaking, um, you can tape this. But generally, you don't need to tape it, and generally, you can hand tighten this. You know, if you start torquing it down too much, you'll warp the O-ring and cause problems. And so this is going to be our outlet connection. Now, you'll have a generally a threaded post on your hose bib as well, and that's where you're going to put the female side of the coupler. Same thing, there's an O-ring in here. You shouldn't need tape, uh, but no. We're dealing with water under pressure. You're going to have to work for this. We're getting you 95, if not 98% of the way there. You just have to not be an idiot. Uh, remember, I'm assuming you're very intelligent, you're successful people. Uh, and so use your head. I am happy that you are calling us and asking us, well, not calling us because we don't have a phone number, but you're emailing and, and asking us for help. But we've already given you the help, so take it easy on us. Just know, if you email about, uh, you know, you didn't get your fittings, it might be a couple of days because everyone's sending the same email because they're idiots. So, our quick disconnect works like so. And if you get the pliers out and start torquing this down, you'll find that it will leak uh, because there's an O-ring in there It's designed to seal and you're going to crush the O-ring and warp it. Uh, and this is a prior P114 hose bib. If you want to get really baller, this hose bib is like almost as much as the darn pressure washer, but that's what we have set up here. And so, no matter which one of our packages you buy, uh, we're going to send it with two sets. Remember? Watch. Did you get that? It comes apart. So, you're going to take the male end of the hose, put a female coupler on, you can even look inside of here, and if the if the O-ring starts to warp, or if you find that this fitting is having a hard time seating, that's when you'll know you'll you, you you've gone too tight. Again, hand tight is probably enough. You could tape it, but tape really isn't going to do much on this. 
and then know I'm probably going to hook this up and very likely going to end up with some leak that I'm going to have to chase. You're, you're, it's part of the game. We're putting water under pressure, so be prepared for that. Now, this machine here, they just made some changes to it. It has a new power button that is... Um, they had some they had some power button failures and so they redesigned the power button um we're going to this is iteration number one so this, again, this is gonna be a long video i want you to know all about this so you can make an educated decision here we're selling this for 210 bucks i think it was like 178 or 192 or something on on amazon at one point um, but with the modifications with Chinese import duties and, you know, the issues of, you know, shipping costs being much higher, I'm just buying it. They, they you know, they set the price. But I'm working with my friend James, who uh, has been an OG follower for a really long time. He's the, he's the manufacturer of these. Uh, he has relationships in China. This is a Chinese-made machine. This is a hundred and twenty to 150-hour machine. Whereas like the K1700 or the Greenworks or the Ryobis, those are 60, 70, 80, maybe 100 hour machines if you're like, lucky. This is a change the oil at 50 hours and you're just starting to break it in uh, and run for thousands of hours, in some cases 20 years if you service it. These are sealed radial axial pumps. Um, with plungers that you really can't access. There's no maintenance. There's no oil to change. Um, these are essentially throwaway units. If you're washing a car a week, let's say you're using it two hours a week, you know, 52 weeks a year, you know, you're going to get a couple of years out of something like this. If you have really good luck, it might last for three or four years, but these are machines just like the Ryobis and the Karchers and the Sunjos. There's some people that have been using them for five years, Dear Lord, who is that? Stop calling me. So, so there is a, a very high probability you're going to get some time out of this. Uh, Two-year warranty, Mike? Two-year Two warranty. It's a replacement warranty. Um, and uh, we'll have all the information. All the information you know, will be in our description on, on the purchase. Uh, don't freaking call me. There's nothing I can do about it. I don't fix the machines. Um, you would call them directly. Uh, and so I'm the retailer and they're the manufacturer of the product. Um, it's, uh, it's not as good of a warranty as the Karcher's, but it gets the job done. So James called me. Um, said, hey, actually it was Mike who was behind the camera here. Uh, he um, talked to them. Um, James says, look, I'm a follower of Obsessed Garage. I think I have an idea. He and I got on the phone, started sharing some ideas on what I was looking for. Um, I had just tested the pressure washer that day. Uh, we're gonna show you it gets about, uh, it gets Krenzla like, if not more than Krenzla output. And um, so I was interested. And he basically said, look, we can make this thing whatever we want. Uh, and I said, how long is it going to take? It'll take a couple of years. I said, well, what about the current version? Can we bring that to market through Obsessed Garage uh, and, um, and work with that and really compile data and then continue to hone and adjust the machine as we have different iterations? So already version one has a better, you know, better power, um, power button and has a little bit better GFI plug on it. So one of the modifications that will be coming in the future this is like buying a computer. It's going to be like buying a, you know, a MacBook Pro. Every six months is going to be a new version of this. And so if you need a pressure washer, it's only 210 bucks. I'd say buy it, use it for a year and a half. When it breaks, we'll buy it. you'll buy a new one and you'll get whatever the, the newest iteration is. Uh, but no, these are going to change. These are going to adjust. One of the things we're already working on is getting rid of this plastic connection where the inlet comes in. So that was, what, uh, 10 minutes just for me to get to the uh, inlet connection here. Tommy and Jeff said they wanted me to tell all about this thing. So this you're going to torque down as well. There's an O-ring inside of there. Make sure there's a black O-ring. And you can do that by hand. Again, if you start getting out pliers, channel locks, uh, you're probably going to run into issues. And we're going we're gonna to set this up, and I'll show you how to fix it if, it if it leaks a little bit. But we take our fitting, which we just hand tightened, and we've got our, our garden hose connection. Now, this is the only fitting that you can hand tighten. All the rest will generally be taped and torqued by us if you buy it from us. If not, 
everything leading up to this point is 50, 60, 70 PSI or less, maybe 90 PSI if you have a lot of water pressure, uh, whereas everything out of here is gonna be a thousand plus PSI, a lot more pressure. So water comes in. The way that this pump works is there's a wobble plate. There's a plate inside that wobbles like this. If you go and you watch, if you watch the Crenza series where I've torn apart the machines, you'll see that wobble plate. Where this pressure washer is different than the Karchers and the Ryobis and all of the others, this was James's idea um, from, from, well, Active is just a brand that he made up. I'm not sure what his parent holding company is called. Um, I don't want Obsessed Garage name on it. We could have put on it, but I don't want to be responsible for this thing. It's just a, you know, it's a cheap pressure washer that solves a, a need. But the way that this works and the way this is different is that every other pump, including the Krenzla, any radial axial pump has three plungers. This has five. So the, you know, you can go look at the, you know, the image of how it works, but the, the pump, the, the, um, the, the, uh, the wobble plate rotates. There's a, you know, there's a motor, you know, the electric motor drives it, rotates, and it, you know, basically pushes in and out these spring-loaded uh, plungers. And so since there are five, plung five plungers, it doesn't develop a whole lot more pressure, at least the way it's tuned, but it develops a lot more flow. Even on a, this is a 14 amp motor, I believe. So it's a 14 amp rated uh, motor that works easily on a, on a decent 15 amp circuit, doesn't even need to be dedicated. Uh, and they, the target flow on this is two gallons per minute. Um, in the real world, we're gonna show you, we're gonna get you know, somewhere around uh, 1.8 to 1.9 gallons per minute, which is insane for 210 bucks. There's nothing else like this on the market. So our inlet comes in, our outlet goes out, and where is the darn connection on? It's on the back. So eventually we're probably likely going to have inlet outlets on the same side. Uh, we're going to play with this and we're going to have uh, different iterations where you can wall mount this. You could certainly put this on a shelf, um, but we're going to have different iterations of this as, as we come out in the future like I was talking about. So inlet comes in, we just showed you that. Outlet goes out of a M22 15 millimeter. And so if I can turn this around, if we can do a, get a close-up of this, let me just take this off for right now. We'll put that back on. So here's our outlet. And so, for whatever reason, the cheap pressure washers, and I think it was probably had something to do with the, you know, trying to make them pr pr proprietary, but see the little, my pinky going in the hole there? So that's that middle section, the center section there is 15 millimeters in, in diameter from you know from left to right yeah not circumference diameter so the you draw a line across the center point of the circle you get diameter and so inside of there is a 15 millimeter hole and so this o-ring section of our m22 um, type type fitting m22 is the type of threads this in center insert is 15 millimeters well most American built pressure washers the and higher end pressure washers have a 14 millimeter diameter. And so if you try to use a standard 14 millimeter fitting, uh, it's going to leak. And so you need this slightly larger 15 millimeter fitting. There's no tape that needs to go on this out outlet. Uh, the um, uh, the O-ring inside here seals everything up. So this can be put on by hand. Um, if it's leaking, then you probably just are too much of a baby to tighten it by your, you know, a couple of fingers. Um, but we like to, I like to put a quick disconnect on here so I can break it down. Makes it easier, simpler to connect. This here happens to be a MTM stainless fitting. We have uh, brass fittings or zinc plated brass fittings. We have stainless fittings. We have like ultra high end uh, Mosmatic fittings depending on you know, which package you get to me I don't think it makes sense to put a $50 fitting on a $200 pressure washer I put my $50 fitting on my $1,200 pressure washer um, These are built in China to target and this is a 15 millimeter correct size fitting. So let's just kind of leave this sitting here so then we have our outlet hose you could use, god dang it, at least there's going to be water here. So you could use the junk hose. 25 feet is useless. Don't buy a 25 foot hose because you're going to be dragging this thing around. You want a 50 foot hose. So this here is a 50 foot 
really expensive. How much is this? Oh, it's like 100 and something bucks, 150 bucks or something like that with some stainless fittings. Again, go to obsessedcars.com. You can go on the active pressure washer link. You can look at basic intermediate advanced. We have it all spelled out there. Um, Tommy and uh, the whole crew have been spending a lot of time getting this dialed in. Um, the hose, if you buy it unterminated by us, know that you're gonna have to be a real man, not a baby. Go get your wife, she'll help you. But this has to be torqued down. If you don't torque it down, these threads are purposely stout. You have to torque the crap out of this. Uh, if you don't have a vise, then you're gonna have to learn how to lay a wrench on the bench and push against it. Or like I said, go get your wife, she'll help you. She'll do it for you. Um, these have to be tightened down, otherwise you're gonna get leaking. You want uh, six, seven wraps of tape. Uh, or the smart thing to do, just buy it from us and it'll be done, taken care of. Stop buying this junk off of Amazon. Um, the, the hose is where you don't want to skimp. It makes your user experience so much better. The other advantage is, if you do go to a higher-end pressure washer in the future, chances are, if you take care of your hose, you don't run it over all the time, your hose is probably going to be uh, still good, good to go. So I'm gonna take my hose. Notice how nice and easy this is. Let me cut these off here. Bear with me one second. I gotta make sure I'm still a rock star because uh, Scott's making me look bad. I gotta keep going off the top of my head. So we take our fitting here. There's a swiveling end and a non-swiveling. Really doesn't matter because your gun's likely gonna have a swivel. And I'm gonna take and connect it right to my pressure washer outlet. Now, these things have O-rings. Inspect it. You know, they always tell you like, inspect your oil every time you drive the car and you never have in your life. Well, this is one of those times, you don't have to inspect it. But if water starts shooting out the side and you look in there, don't look in there when it's shooting water, of course, um, you won't be able to get it off the fitting anyway. But if water is shooting out the side, it means you lost the O-ring. We send an O-ring with all of our kits, an extra one. Do we still send that? Still send an O-ring. We send an extra O-ring, which you could throw away. And then you go on Facebook and you start slamming us how your fittings don't work. This fitting here, even though you had to have your wife put this on for you, this fitting here is like a, it's like a, um, a tire is even a good example because tires last longer than these can. Sometimes these things last forever. Sometimes they last a few months. These MTM ones don't even, we don't even warranty them. It's like, it's like a $6 piece of cheap stainless. It's not even T304. They're cheap, they work well, they don't need to be super expensive unless you, you know, you're just a stickler for, for um, you know, for fit and finish like I am with the Mossmatic. Um, but this is a throwaway, it's a consumable. Your hose is also technically a consumable but should last a lot longer. Just know that if you put this on here and you have some leaking out the side, it's because you're a baby. And if you have some leaking here, it's because you lost your O-ring. You're still a nice guy either way, but just don't be a baby and don't look down here when water's shooting out. But make sure you check your O-ring. Should fit on. This shouldn't be very complicated. But remember, water under pressure means you're bound to have to work for it sometimes. It's part of the game. We're getting you 98% of the way there, you're gonna have to do the 2%. So there's our connection. Cobra Jet hose. The reason why I like this hose, uh, the jacket isn't the prettiest, um, but it's the most pliable, pressure washer hose I found and I bought every one I think in existence uh, considerably different than like the normal crappy uh, you know single wire hose that comes with the machine this is a single wire hose the thing where you can make a real mistake is you run it over all the time you're gonna put a hole in it you know there's braids in here and you'll put a hole in it and it'll start shooting out you know start squirting out the side don't don't let that happen so I know this stuff is complicated. You can skip this whole thing and go right to, right to the site and buy it. I've been working on this for years so that it's uh, super easy. So this machine, we have our inlet and outlet. So let's flip it back around here so that way we can operate it. Let me put our inlet in. So think about path of water. Water's coming out of our out of our hose bib, going into our pressure washer, out of through our pump. The pump is going to pressurize it, and then send water out the hose and into our gun. So this is where you're going to have a lot of choice. This is where the basic, advanced, and ultimate packages give you options. 
so the basic package uh, we've done away with. Uh, I don't think we do any pressure washers with the SG28 anymore, do we? Um, so I'm a huge fan, huge proponent of swiveling. So when I started doing this, there was one short gun, and, uh, and it was the MTM M407. And I learned about this in honoring the source, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gregory, we'll call him. Gregory in, uh, in Texas is a uh, ex-MIT professor and uh, suffered from, he told me his whole life story, COPD or something like that. And so he wanted to have a nice, simple way to not have to get a garden hose out to clean his wheels. And so he found this MTM M407. He sent me this whole long dissertation write-up. I said, man, that's a great idea because I was using my, my Krenzler wand that was like 40 inches long trying to clean my car. And so I'd have to get a garden hose out every time. So that's when I found the MTM M407. From there, I would find my hose was always kinking up. Uh, and so I wanted to put a swivel in line. And so there's some pictures online. If you search Go Obsess Garage MTM M407, you'll probably see it where I have like, I think it was like nine inches of adapters and fittings and females to males to get a swivel. And that's when I found Mosmatic. Mosmatic makes the best swivels on the planet. Uh, and so I had an MTM gun, a Mosmatic swivel, a bunch of other quick disconnects so I could break it all down, but I had you know, six or eight inches of bulk hanging off the end of my hose. Well, then eventually I discovered this gun. It was a catalog line item and uh, there were no pictures of it. And uh, when I first decided I wanted to start selling pressure washers, when everybody was telling me no, I called Mosmatic and I said, hey, you have a swiveling gun in your catalog. I want that. And Jamie, who is a good friend of mine now, said, no, you don't want that. I said, yes, I do. He said, no, you don't. Uh, and then in fact, he said at the end of the conversation, I wasn't gonna be allowed to sell this stuff anyway, so it didn't matter. I said, well, I need one. And I think he'd probably charge me like 180 bucks or something to get this, this not this exact gun, but this particular model. Uh, and it had the DGV type swivel. That's the model number for, uh, for the Mosmatic swivel built into the gun. I got it. And of course the rest is history. You know, we've sold 10, 15,000 of these. And then however many other people have copied and sold uh, tens of thousands more than I have. Uh, but this product basically didn't even exist. They didn't have one on the shelf. And so this is what we now, we still keep this in stock because it's quite a bit less expensive than our, our ultimate version. Uh, but notice swivel on the inlet of both guns. Both of these were taping and torquing and installing a plug. And so Jamie and I got together about two and a half years ago and said, what if we made an ultimate solution where we took and we reduced a bunch of the bulk and we did an integrated plug uh, and uh, integrated into the handle of the gun. And so we have the Obsessed Garage on the only place in the world that has this thing. This is my gun designed and manufactured by Mosmatic for Obsessed Garage, but this is our ultimate solution. And we'll continue to tweak these over the years as well. The ultimate solution also comes with uh, 304 type stainless fittings, which are amazing, but uh, rather expensive. So, why don't I carry every MTM gun? I've touched and used pretty much every pressure washing accessory that exists. This gun exists. God dang it, Jeff, that's my phone, dropped it on the ground. This gun exists because this gun I couldn't get in stock. So I called my friends at MTM complaining about Mosmatic, my friends at Mosmatic. I said, these idiots can't get the crap together I can't get enough guns. Here's what I want. I want the SGS28, which was the non-swiveling gun, which we were selling a lot at the time as our entry-level option. I don't want it to be as expensive as the Mosmatic. I want it to be full stainless. I want it to be the same ergonomics of the SG28, uh, and I want it to be uh, swiveling. And uh, that's why we have this. So your boy, Matty Mormon here, is responsible for this in the back rooms of, I remember sitting out on my porch yelling at uh, Rob Bridgeforth and Mike Grindle about, guys, I need this, and they made it happen. And so, to my demise, now everybody in the world sells this thing. Uh, I didn't want exclusivity of it because I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to stay with, uh, I didn't want to get rid of the Mosmatic, which is still a better gun. 
and then eventually, you know, the rest is history. So you don't want the blue one. This is a better gun than the Aqualine. You don't need, you don't even need T304 stainless, so there's no reason for T316. The trigger operation of this is better than the Aqualine. It's less money. This thing's like 65 bucks or 70 bucks or something like that. So on the entry level, this is my, this is my favorite gun. So gun connects like so you're much more likely to have this o-ring pop out over time um, but the way that you do this is just like that i didn't even test this before it should work every time sometimes you know it's it, you know it, it, it's you're gonna have to work for this sometimes these they're chinese fittings again this is a six dollar fitting it's it's good enough for me should be good enough for you uh, it works uh, but know that this is a consumable this will break and wear out over time depending on how how um you know sometimes you can be really careful with things in it uh, and it holds up uh, for a week sometimes you can be uh you know just throw it on the ground it holds up for a lifetime but you know it's a consumable same thing here there's an o-ring on here as well if you ever have a spray pattern that's blowing out the side it means you lost the o-ring a lot of people will use the wrong nozzles as well don't use the nozzles that came with the machine on this just don't do it they're not the right length. I don't know if those are, but don't even try it. And so you want to use nozzles that we send you. And it has to be a short style nozzle. Some of the other ones that come with like Greenworks and stuff like that, that you're gonna wanna try to use is gonna, it's gonna push too far in and the, you know, the O-ring's gonna fly out and you're gonna call us and say your gun's broken. And I'm gonna tell you to get freaking lost. You're gonna go cry. You're gonna tell your wife that uh, Maddie yelled at you. You just don't wanna do that. See, in fact, here's one that isn't fitting quite right. Sometimes you gotta work at it. You gotta break it in a little bit. It's part of the game. Sometimes it fits perfectly, sometimes it doesn't. Here's the Mosmatic. Let's see how it fits in that. See, nice and smooth. It's part of the game, water under pressure. These are professional grade products that I'm selling to um, usually in most cases as non-professionals. So act like a professional, pretend I'm getting you there. Don't email Jeff because Jeff then cries himself to sleep like you were crying when your O-ring failed. Okay, so I don't use this. I don't use this. I only use this because it's freaking great. So this is the Obsessed Garage version and it's blue. So it's even better. And so then you have a wand. And we have two different wand versions. We have the old school wand that I made up, which is probably not really the right thing to do. It's certainly not the right thing to do. It's kind of pointless to have a protector around it, but the protector doesn't completely protect. And so we have our latest version. So just do what Uncle Maddie tells you and go big. Buy the ultimate package. But you don't, you don't have to. It all works. It all works great. You won't know the difference unless you get this. And uh, then you'll say, man, I wish I would have listened to you from the beginning. So notice swiveling. So my hose won't get all, all hung up and I have the ability to quickly disconnect from short gun to long wand, we call it, or long gun, depending on if you're rinsing or if you're cleaning your wheels or you just don't like the wand. If you don't like a wand, I don't like you. So just kidding. Okay. So, in continuing our education for the day, and then we'll actually get into this, and you know, maybe some of you could just skip ahead and watch the results. But um, these thingies, I can see you. Yeah, look at that, I can see, can you see my eyeball? You probably can't. There's a little hole in here, it's a hole. That's how the water comes out. I can see, Mike right in his eye, I can see it. So there's a hole, all of these have a hole. This one has a hole, oh yeah, I can see really well for the green one. So. The hole has different sizes. This is where we other get emails from people who you know, don't listen to me. Watch the whole video. I know it's long, but you don't have to watch it once and then you'll know for the rest of your life. The hole makes a difference. Notice this pressure washer doesn't have any adjustment. There's no like I can turn it up or turn it down. There's no unloader. And even if it did have an unloader, generally you don't want to mess with the unloader. You're generally best served changing the size of the orifice. Now this is an infant. This is not infinite. There's a chart, and we we have a chart likely on the you know on the, the pressure washing page that tells you all about orifices. You can't just put a say 1.0 orifice 
on this machine if you want to dial it up to like 2000 PSI. It doesn't quite work that way. The motor has a range that it works with. And so what we're doing is we're generally testing and tuning these, kind of like we'd tune a ECU in a computer, uh, or uh, the computer in your car, or the ECU in your car to try to get a little bit more output. We're doing the same thing with a pressure washer. The only difference is I want a little less pressure. My target pressure when pressure washing is 1,000 PSI, and then I would like to have more flow. And I would want to have 10 gallons per minute if I could. Um, but uh, in most cases, we're going to target, you know, two gallons a minute is kind of a, a good benchmark for washing, especially in this, in this price range. That's the goal. And of course, none of them do that. Greenworks, go look at the pressure washing chart, Sunjo, all these things. You can tell them every time you turn them on, they sound like they're going to break. And they do 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 gallons per minute. And there's a pretty remarkable difference between 1.2 and two gallons per minute. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of power, it takes a lot of quality in the pump in order for that to happen. So, orifice matters, just do what I freaking tell you to do. How's that sound? But don't go grab your whatever nozzle. First of all, your O-ring is gonna get blown out and then secondly, you're gonna be at the wrong pressure and you're gonna blow up your thing and you're gonna call and yell at me. So don't do that. So we sell these several different ways. Um, if you do anything but the ultimate package, you get uh, you know, a package of uh, MTM, use traditional stainless nozzles uh, and you know they you know plug into the gun like so or they do the same thing at the end of the wand. Um, if, if you do the ultimate package, you get the OG spec nozzle this type of nozzle which is our you know our, our idea our design so let's do some testing on this and show you how this works um, and we'll talk about the foam cannon at the very end and so what i want to do is put a gauge in line where is the gauge do we have the gauge out tommy what did you do with the gauge uh, up one Oh my gosh, he screwed it. This is a glycerin gauge. So there's always an air bubble in a glycerin gauge. So if your pressure washer has a gauge and you see a bubble like the Krenzla, your gauge isn't broken, that's how it works. Okay, take my gun, put it in place. You don't need a gauge. I'm gonna tell you what the pressure is. You're just gonna have to, you don't even have to trust me. We're gonna put it right on the freaking screen so you don't have to think about it. Okay, so take my wand. We don't really need a wand. Wand doesn't affect pressure. Hose length and hose diameter, I found, doesn't affect pressure enough to even detect it on a, on a uh, gauge. So as long as you're under 150, 200 feet, um, you won't notice a pressure drop in your hose, so you're fine. If you start connecting hoses together, you can run into the issues. I found that you'll run into more issues if you try to quick disconnect your inlet hose uh, and try to put two hoses together, you'll run into more issues than you would if you put two uh, uh, pressure washing, high pressure hoses together. So I got everything locked up here. Let's turn it on. Let's see if we get any leaks. We, we probably will. So far, so good. Filling up the machine. And a little bit of air blowing out my gauge here. No leaks. A little bit of seeping over here. So again, this is part of the game. I have to, have to fight it. You have to work for it. So again, I didn't tighten that down enough, but now we're good. Usually once you get your leak solved, as long as you're not making you know, major changes, you, you should be fine. You should, your setup should be okay. And then we're gonna let the water out of our machine. So you can do that a couple of different ways. You can just pull the trigger with the machine off. We've got a drain right here, so let me just push this out of the way. We use our drain right here. You can also turn it on. I found that you generally don't, as long as you don't have air in the inlet line, cavitation, you know, where you, you do bump damage to the pump usually doesn't happen, at least not very often. So turn the machine on. Now this, just like most other machines, now have a pressure switch. Uh, the pressure switch turns the machine off uh, as soon as it builds pressure. So notice it turned on and turned off. I got a little bit of leaking right here. Must have a problem with my O-ring. 
So this, my gauge is leaking. So now I gotta turn the water off, figure out what's going on here. This old MTM fitting probably just doesn't like my new. So the O-ring's okay. Let's just use the old uh, MTM type. Should be okay then. I'm not doing this on purpose. This is part of the deal. Part of the deal with water under pressure. Even though we're sending it to you, you still gotta work at it. So this gauge is an older type fitting and that's why it was leaking on my new type fitting here on my new OG spec gun. Okay, so we've already done this testing, so I'm gonna cheat this step a little bit here, um, but we have a 40 degree 4.0 nozzle. I believe it's a 4.0, you can usually tell from the side. So this says 40040. So that means 40 degree 4.0 nozzle, the first zero, because it could be like a 10.0 nozzle. And so we've already tested this out to figure out which gives us the appropriate pressure and which gives us the, you know, and then, then we get a flow reading from there. And so I run this. Now it's gonna vary slightly from machine to machine. When we first tested this with a 4.0 nozzle, we got 1,070 PSI. Right now I'm getting like 1030, 1025. PSI is what I'm getting out of it. And a simple way, this is the test that we used on all the pressure washers was to, um, was to do a timed test for flow. And so I cut a hole in the bucket here and I'm going to weigh it after a minute. So let's see here, let's start our stopwatch. Three, two, one. So, crap, what was our math? Chris, I know our grit guard wasn't in here. Ooh, we're gonna lose a little weight without water. Let's see what our weight is here. We don't have the douche scale. The douche scale went in the, uh, the auction. That's 18.44 pounds. So I think it was 8.32 gallons, 8.32 pounds per gallon of water. Yeah, minus the bucket. Crap, where's Chris? So it was 2.3, 18.44 minus 2.3 pounds divided by 8.32 is 1.94 GPM. <laughs> Pretty freaking legit. <laughs> now, your logical question would be, well, Matt, I knew it. Why would you buy a Krenzler in that voice? You know, I, that's why. If it ever does that, that means you got a leak somewhere, an air leak or a little water leak somewhere. Well, Matt, Jeff, we, we don't have a leak. I said, well, Joel, try again. Take, take all your fittings off and try, try again. So 1.9, what did I say, four? GPM, 1.9399. So 1.94 GPM. The last one we did was 1.85. So give or take when I release the trigger and you know, how much, you know, wind I'm blowing on the bucket when I'm yelling at it. But it's a 1.9 gallon per minute, $210 pressure washer. That one doesn't even do 1.9 gallons per minute. It, you, sometimes you get right around that. So my money is still buying that. This is a Chevy Cavalier, for those of you who know what that is, with like an, a, uh, an LS1 in it, right? <laughs> that is a Porsche 911 with a you know 9A1 boxer engine in it. You know they're they're both going to end up at the same horsepower rating. Which one do you want? You know maybe Chevy Cavalier's not. Maybe it's, it's, let's call it a Honda Civic 
with a supercharged um, K series. Still a little janky, has a little pukey sound. It's probably gonna blow up at some point. Um, some of them are gonna be dead on arrival, but for 210 bucks, you're getting a freaking lot of performance out of this Chinese made machine. So, you make up your mind. I don't, well I do care, I want you to buy that one because I make more money, because that one's more money. It's, this has more margin, that has more money because it's less margin but bigger dollar. How about you just buy both? Even better, buy one for like your house, your house and your garage and your roof and buy a bunch of them. So now I gotta test the foam cannon, don't I? So foam cannon, what did we decide on these? Is a 1.25? Yeah. Does our basic come with the basic foam cannon? Is that the idea? The original foam cannon. So foam cannons, if you buy one of our kits, don't we put the plug in it? So right now, let me let me help this help you out here. You're gonna freak out. I made a decision three years ago. So look on this box. See all these things? You don't freaking need any of them. None. None of those. So guess what we do? We open the box. We open the box. That means I, I would have a little more work to do to make sure that I don't have any leaks. We open the box. What we do, we're very kind. We take the extra stuff and we throw it away. It's like face off. Remember that? Face off. You guys don't even know that, do you? Did any of you guys, any of you three know what that is? Like the, the face off. You remember that? Oh my gosh, what is wrong with you people? Nicolas Cage? Oh, the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. where he goes like this, he goes in to take his face off. So we take the stuff and we throw it in the dumpster. First we throw it in the garbage can, then we throw it in the dumpster. And we put in here what you need. We had one douchebag saying, I was saying, this is illegal. You're false advertising and I want to kick that guy in the throat. I'm trying to help you here. The reason why we did this is because we left the stuff in there and then Five out of ten emails would be, what do I do with this extra stuff? So instead, we just get rid of the extra stuff and make it simple for you. What we do include in the box, do we leave the 1.1 in with the active so we decide to do that? It's probably a mistake, uh, but we do leave the 1.1 millimeter orifice. If you use the 1.1 on this, you're probably going to blow it up. So don't, don't do that. Use the 1.25 that we pre-install inside of the foam cannon. So the foam cannon comes like this, and we used to torque these all down for people, and then it just depends. It depends on what day it is and what people want, but uh, you can man up enough to get yourself a 14 millimeter frickin' wrench and tighten this thing down. The reason why we don't put it on is because sometimes you know, people get a different pressure washer and they wanna, they wanna be able to put the 1.1 in, or they already had it, and then they, then they can't figure out how to get it off because we torque it because we're real men and you know not babies. So anyway, you torque this thing down, you put this thing on, to you know tighten it up, get you know just hold it, hold it between your legs or whatever you got to do. Get a 14 millimeter wrench and, and tighten it down, and then that'll make sure that it uh, if it's leaking you didn't tighten it enough. And so the orifice is in here. This little thingy comes with 1.25. With the active, use the 1.25. Don't use dumb, dumb logic in that, well, I'm gonna put a smaller hole on there and I'm gonna get more foam. Yeah, you'll get more foam, but then it's gonna grenade it in a pretty pretty short order. So don't do that. If you're not getting good foam, a couple of trouble, troubleshooting things. One, make sure the dot knob is turned all the way to positive. That's one thing. Two, um, make sure that if you have really hard water, um, you can try going and using filtered water or use warm water or use more soap. I fill up the line on both of these to 150 milliliters with Atom soap or GSF. Those are my two soaps of choice of using chemical guys, honeydew, because you're trying to save 82 cents rather than just freaking listening to me. Um, then whatever, trip out. Um, but this is the foam cannon. I'm not testing it. Do I have to test it? Just use the one you got right there. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I don't even want to do that. Go to the site. Click on the pressure washing spreadsheet 
and we'll have all the specs on there. Thing's pretty sweet. I'm telling you, the foam cannon works. Uh, but we'll have the specs for SPL, we'll have the specs for, you know, what do you need. But the, the smartest thing to do is just buy the machine. The reason why I'm showing you all this stuff is um, because some people are just going to buy the machine and try to adapt some of the stuff, the accessories you already have from your Karcher that you bought or your Greenworks. All the accessories will work. You just might need a 4.0 orifice. You might need to buy a 1.25 millimeter orifice for your foam cannon if you already have one. But I think this is, I think this is what, 20... Three and a half year old. No. Yeah, the gap from say 23 and a half till about 27. This is what I would have bought. Because when I was younger than that, I had way more money to know what to do with. Because I didn't have any responsibilities. But then I had responsibilities and no money for a while. And then I started to make some money, and then that's when I would get a Krenzla. Maybe a comet. So that's what I think this thing is. And so stay tuned. We're going to continue to modify and continue to come up with different versions. Um, I think we're going to sell a bazillion of these things. Um, and um, I think that um, I think that people, um, if you listen to me and you go back and you watch this video, uh, we saw I just solved every problem you could possibly have. And if for some reason you didn't feel like listening. I hate saying this because to me, customer service is synonymous with entitlement. We don't serve people. We work with you. We're in this together. And so when I say we don't do customer service, I'm not saying we st we're not any good at it because we're better than freaking anybody. First of all, no one else th 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 didn't exist before. Um, what I'm saying is don't be freaking entitled like a little baby. Listen to what I'm saying. Try. And uh, we're here if you need, you need us. We've seen every problem imaginable. And if we haven't seen it, we're going to tell you to go jump off a bridge because you're not going to be able to fix it. Because if we haven't seen it, then you're, you're screwed. I'm sorry. Just buy a Krenzla. And even then, you're likely to have problems. You probably likely have less problems with this because that thing is a lot more sophisticated um, than this, this, this little Chinese hunk of crap is. But it works. It's not a knockoff of anybody else's. No one stole anything from anybody else. It's not trademark, trademark infringement. I think it's a good, viable solution. And that's the story. And I'm going to work on getting this in Canada as soon as possible because I like Canadians more than Americans. Because I like Canadians more than I like myself. Chris doesn't like them, but I do. I think they're cool. So we're going to work on Canada and the UK and Australia and so on and so forth. So hopefully in about a year from now, if somebody's watching this video, we're already in Canada and offering you all these solutions. Sesgarage.com. My name's Matt Mormon. If you don't like me, I don't care. I'm going to keep making these videos and keep compiling the data and keep making choices on what I would buy and then sharing it with you. And then you're smart enough to decide whether or not that information is of value to you or not. And I'd really appreciate it if you'd honor the source, buy it from me. And if you don't, don't freaking email us asking us how to fix it. Meeting adjourned. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. See you soon. Go check for the specs. I'm done. I'm not doing any more foam cannon tests. See ya. All right, pressure washing bros. Let's do some real talk here. So what has it been? It's been well over a year since we did the pressure washing test. And the main reason I did that test was because I wanted to uh, prove to myself uh, that I was right about the specifications of, of the units that take two. I don't like that. Take two. I don't like that. <laughs> Let me get these closer. All right, bros. Let's do some real talk here. Uh, we have the new old. Oh, dang. What's going on, dude? I'm back. Yeah, I told you I'm tired. I'm tired. I can't, I can't focus here. I haven't done this in a while. All right, take three.